Here. How are you doing, sir? Good, sir. How are you doing today? Awesome. It's a beautiful awesome. day out there. It is. I wish you guys could see this view. It looks uh, pretty, pretty amazing. Um, so let's get to know uh, Ken a little bit. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, first off, Ashiga, where did you go to high school? What was high school before San Jose State and then Stanford, correct? Yeah, it's correct. I had the misfortune of being born in Riverside <laughs> in <laughs> Southern California. So I, I left there as soon as I could uh, at 18 and came up uh, here to San Jose to go to San Jose State. And for the, for the most part, I've been here all my life. It's wonderful. And then after San Jose State was Stanford. Uh, what made you decide to do political science? Uh, I was always very interested in journalism and um, politics when I was in junior high school and mm -hmm. high school. Uh, you know, student body president, uh, editor of the school newspaper. Uh, there was a lot of activism, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when I was in high school. So always very interested in politics. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I came up here um, as a political science major, uh, took a lot of poli-sci courses and had a great professor that many of us know, Dr. Terry Christensen, okay. uh, who specializes in local government. And uh, so started doing internships with elected officials mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at City Hall and then worked on campaigns. So mm -hmm. by the time I graduated, uh, felt I was pretty pretty grounded in politics and knew I wanted to make it a career. And we'll backtrack to that, but then comes sociology. Uh, you got your MA in sociology at Stanford. That's right. Um, do we just... Uh, what made you go into that? Just, just studying people. Um, in all honesty, what was the? Um, my brother did sociology at UC Santa Cruz as well. Um, what kind of gave you a knack for that uh, with sociology? Well, I sh uh, just to back up a little bit. So, sure, sure, so, sure. Oh, yeah. there's, so no, no. there's so much to back up on. You know, there you go. You guys have no, you guys have no idea uh, how excited I was for this. Uh, I, I don't think Mr. Yugo gets enough uh, credit for everything he's done, everything he's uh, accomplished, and I feel like he's done it in a cool, calm, collective uh, way. In that, so we'll get to um, all of that. But sure, let, let, let's back up all the way to the Evergreen College. Uh, wow, we are backing up. But let, yeah. let, me, let, me, let me just sort of say sure. so. Um, so I, I, I graduated from San Jose State, uh, start working in uh, local government, worked mm -hmm. for a congressman, Don Edwards, uh, okay. uh, here for a number of years, go back to Washington, D.C., come back here. And um, at that point, now I'm about 32, mm -hmm. and it was great being a political staffer. We enjoyed it very much, but I knew I didn't want to sort of do that forever. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I applied to Stanford and mm -hmm. get accepted. And so um, it was doing all of that. Then mm -hmm. I get the master's in uh so sociology and then as you sort of move forward uh yeah. you just sort of pick up degrees right as a graduate student i was gonna be my next question is <laughs> how do people out there you wanted to get a phd in education uh after that what what gave what gave that thirst what gave that uh drive and uh hello to, to danny danny's joining us right now as well morning danny um, but i mean what exactly people who get their phds right i feel like they just they hit that hump after and they fall in love and they just continue on through. Uh, what made you think, okay, you know what, I want to focus on education and get my PhD at Stanford uh, there. Um, it was just keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was great. Um, Stanford was kind enough to pay for it all. Okay, so very cool. Five, five years on their dime. We're going to get to that. Great. Uh, and now they allow people who make under a certain amount of income to actually get their uh, education for free, correct? At yeah, Stanford. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about yeah. that in New York uh, in a second. Uh, and then later, uh, you go on to Harvard, a uh, JFK uh, program uh, for senior executives. Yeah. Um, I thought that was pretty brilliant. What was that like, that experience like oh, you know, all the way to East Coast? Yeah, no, that was nice. You know, really with um, the John F. Kennedy School, um, you can imagine uh, a lot of it was organizational leadership. Huge year of mine. I'm, I'm a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. To the degree, we won't get into that. <laughs> but, uh, but amazing. Um, amazing, amazing yeah. For, for a whole month uh, in, in the summer um, mm -hmm. with other leaders across the country, with, uh, with great uh, professors coming in and mm -hmm. a lot of different workshops and seminars and just sort of um, creating a, a network of people throughout the country and some mm -hmm. of whom I still in contact with. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, just you know, trying to figure out how to how to become a leader, how to be more effective, how to engage more people in the community. Just evolving, improving yourself. Yeah, like a true triathlete would. Right. <laughs> uh, so, um, 
Then you're on the board of trustees of education with San Jose uh, Community College. San Jose, uh, City, San Jose College, City College, excuse Evergreen me, Valley. Evergreen Valley College. What was uh, what was that like uh, for you? Um, well, first off, for people who had no idea, what kind of decisions are you really in control of? Is it is it the uh, curriculum? Uh, the, what is your day to day for some of these board of trustees? Yeah, so we'll back up just a little bit Wait, again. Did you have a water for me whenever you get a chance? I apologize. Um, so, uh, so I get my uh, my my PhD from Stanford. Yes, and, yes. Uh, and Education. so then, so very very lucky to then um, get hired at San Jose State mm. uh, in the political science department. Yep, yep. And, and you so, still periodically teach, by the way, but you yep. did that for 12 years. Which, that's right, that's right. So I did my so, homework. So you did. So uh, <laughs> we're going to, at this point, you're at an A minus. So we'll see if we get, we'll get you to an A because you're always going to strive. Not that well, yeah. You always okay. have to strive. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Love it. so I noticed teaching that there's uh, a lot of students who have come in from the community college mm -hmm. uh, um, schools mm -hmm. and um, understood that a number of them were having problems, you know, struggling, trying to sort of keep up. I also knew that... Uh, Financially? No, I, well, uh, no more academically. Okay, okay. And that a lot of folks, uh, when they would transfer, would, would end up not graduating with a four-year degree. Right. And so that got me very interested in the community college system and right? seeing if it was doing as good of a job preparing students for those who wanted to go on to a four-year mm -hmm. degree as, as they were. And so that really right. is what led me to run for the community college board. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that we elect folks from the community college board of trustees mm -hmm. uh, to sort of set policy. Mm -hmm. And so while I was there, then was able to um, work Wonderful. with the administration. Yeah. Why, why do you think the, that is, uh, Ken, is it academic probation in the, in the first two years, all the CSU, the first four you people get that, or you felt that they were uh, more struggling in that way, right? That they. Yeah, I, I think... You know, community colleges are great, but mm -hmm. they may not be as academic rig as academically rigorous True. as a four-year university. And so, there as they transfer, they're they're with their peers who've already been two years at at San Jose State or mm -hmm. whatever four-year college they are. Mm -hmm. And I think that they they aren't quite ready to sort. Not, I mean, certainly not all of them, but a, a certain percentage aren't ready to sort of compete and then fall behind pretty mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. And so it was just trying to make sure that we were giving them the background and the education and all of the things that they needed prior to getting to a four-year university so they mm -hmm. could succeed. And to have counselors that are going to let them know about Absolutely. CSU, UC standards, uh, yeah. and so forth. So what comes uh, next uh, after that? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, did you, you made the jump for state assembly straight after your time there. What was the thought process by, I like it. Uh, did, but there was something right behind, uh, you went second to, to Mike Honda. Did you go State Assembly right away? Was it San Jose City Council first? Yeah. Uh, so I get elected to the Community College Board in uh, yes, yes. In, in 92. Okay. And then uh, in uh, March of 96, there's the primary for State Assembly. Got and it. so I, I run for that. <clears throat> well, maybe I need a drink of water here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, you still biking to, to, to work? Yes, well, absolutely. Okay. You know, and there's uh, and there's the bike party uh, okay. at, at tonight coming up. Okay, so that'll, be, it, that'll be fun. Where, where is that? Is that downtown? Yeah, yeah but, but basically. Is that the glow in the dark type thing? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. It's sort of a rave, some, rave, rave party, so awesome. that'll be fun. So yes, still biking, and okay. and also to make the pitch, there's Via Calle on oh, Sunday. Oh yes, 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 yeah. Magdalena, right? We're yeah, talking about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Where they close it's the street? Huge. Yeah, it's, it's going to be huge. So yeah. So it's, it's still fun to go biking. Yeah, so... The state so assembly State job. assembly. Um, oh, unsuccessful. I'm going to come out. I'm going to go straight for governor. All right. Right away. All right. <laughs> and you try to laugh. Light up back here, guys. You guys are killing me. No, we have two... You're of, a tough uh, audience. No, no. It's all good. It's all good. And 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 who are you, peeps? This is... this is People love the behind the scenes here. This is Brian. And Jason. And Jason. But uh, shout out to Jim. Jim, you're not here. You're, you're missing out. You're missing out. Um, so back to it. I love throwing you uh, off. Uh, State Assembly District 20 or is it 23rd, 24th? I, I think 24th. it was 24th. Okay. Yeah, I think they've, okay. the numbers have changed. But, uh, I love failure. I love uh, adversity. Things didn't work out for you. But what did that teach you looking back? Because there's a lot, uh, you know, we can all learn from someone like yourself who's accomplished it yourself. What was that that experience life? You said it was ninety two or ninety six. It was ninety six. So you're 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 much uh, younger and dumber, as we like to say. 
I, I at, was at both, of those things, both of those things, yes. <laughs> I'm still there. But uh, uh, talk to me about that and all, all honesty, what was that What was that like uh, for you? You're going up against uh, Mike. Um, how was that experience uh, for you? Well, it was a, you know, it was a, it was a, a, a bit of a leap. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, certainly I'd been around in politics and campaigns, but mm-hmm. it really was a great experience. I got to know a lot of people, ran a very good campaign, a lot of people in the in the larger political um, community. Yeah, yeah, you're meeting all the big wigs. Hello, yeah. Dolores, uh, as well. Hopefully, Dolores, you can uh, hear us. Uh, let me just double check in. I think I actually put it on silent here. I just want to make sure the volume's all the way up, so you can probably hear us way better. Is, is that better, Bren? Give us a thumbs up or a like, if that is. But um, but awesome. So you're you're you get to see the big wigs. You're exposed uh, to to everybody, uh, as you were saying. Yeah, and. And all of that then certainly uh, assisted me when I ran for city council right. in uh, in 2000, and um, along with all of the community work that I had been you know doing in in the district, really prepared me for that race. And, and you got to to meet everyone um, as well, right? Yeah. Um, so so let's talk about gosh, so many accomplishments. I don't know where to start. I'm excited uh, for this one. Uh, let's talk about uh, nutrition. Um, you held pass something uh, that specifically shows, you know, calories and uh, to make sure that they're able to be identified in uh, restaurants. Uh, for those who don't know, my, my family's in the uh, the subway business. So I remember being a little kid, literally helping my dad have to put the calories on the menus when yeah. they showed up. Little did I know, uh, this is the man who helped enforce that. And childhood obesity is an epidemic. So to me, that, that's a real change. That's awesome. Uh, change obviously it was uh, a, a no no brainer right right people who don't know what, what was the process to get something like that uh, passed completely uh, for dummies from the basics so you have to bring that up uh, to the rest of your colleagues in, in the board of uh, supervisors yeah correct? yeah yeah um, they vote and pass something like that and it's immediately incor- incorporated is that to put it simply yeah pretty uh, much so okay. yeah awesome awesome uh, wonderful and then what are your thoughts on that is there anything else down the pipeline in terms of uh, nutrition that you guys have planned that you guys are working on? Well, one of the things that people uh, don't quite understand about county government, separate mm. from city government, is, is, is uh, yeah, so therefore this, <laughs> that, um, that that counties are sort of in, one of the things we're in charge of is health, particularly mm. sort of public health. Yes. We have the hospital, we have the community clinics, and, and you're the head of the hospital community yeah. committee and the human services committee Yeah, well. yeah, here, yeah, we, we, I thought our, I was busy, man. We break up our responsibilities by committees, and, and I've always been interested awesome stuff. in health. And we know that, as, as you just said, that mm-hmm. there's an epidemic with childhood obesity. Yep. Uh, basically, one out of four of all of our children are either um, overweight or obese. Uh, we're seeing you know, kids coming into our clinics um, with uh, uh, illnesses that, that they should not be having, all based on uh, being overweight and what and lack of exercise. And so part of it is that the fast food industry really sort of promotes these Happy Meals. Come in for a Happy Meal and you get a toy. And so food. the kids are, you know. And it's not just the kids, by the way, right? That, Some adults as well. But, and uh, why do you think that is? Do you think it's, it's food specifically? I've had the, this argument as well. Obviously, exercise is going to help with us. But I just feel like I go to Spain. I go to Barcelona. Everybody in general, in my opinion, just doesn't seem, I don't know, uh, as, as large. Do you think that it actually has to do? I've had these debates with the laws, like the European Union doesn't allow certain chemical ingredients well. We do. I'm sure it's a combination of both, right? Just like yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and this is a hard community. Everybody's working, too, you know, too much. Uh, you don't have one of the parents staying at home and mm. perhaps cooking. Uh, you don't have uh, a lot of fruits and vegetables uh, mm. available. And so, you know, these companies really know how to market to kids. And so, you know, it's the latest, you know, the movie that's out, and then you get the stick figure and whatever. drive throughs Yeah, drive throughs and the amount of calories and sodium and fat in these meals for kids are just, you know, over and above what they need. I mean, oftentimes there'll be one of these meals that really will be the full amount of calories that kids should consume in the entire day. Mm-hmm. And so what we were trying to do is sort of de- de-link, you know, uh, these toys from these Happy Meals. And so the county then passed a, an ordinance that said that uh, to be able to have any sort of um, toy associated with any of these uh, type of Happy Meals, mm-hmm. they need to meet certain nutritional standards. Right. And most of them then couldn't, and so they didn't uh, 
provide the toy for free. The, the parent could buy the toy, mm -hmm. but it just wasn't part of the Happy Meal. And did, and, that, did that move in transition to the uh, entire menu, right, which slowly became... Yeah, and so, that... yeah, and then we were one of the very first jurisdictions that required the menu calorie la labeling as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And so we've just really been trying to uh, sort of make this effort. Other things we've done is to have these hydration stations uh, put in parks oh, and, yes, yes, and, yes. And, and in schools. This the is where you put water bottle, bottle and uh, water refills. comes down. Uh, because if you're going to tell kids, you know, and families, don't drink sugar sweetened beverages and, and all the Coca Colas and stuff, mm -hmm. but you don't make an alternative uh, available it's like gotta water. Be readily available. They got to be readily available. And certainly in a lot of schools and in parks, uh, the the water f faucets would be so grungy right. that who would ever want to drink out of it? And right. so these are much better. You get the purified water. Um, and so it just sort of makes Karen, it better. Karen just joined us. Is this your Karen? Is that Karen Kelly? I'm guessing. Okay. How's it going, Karen? Thought you were going to be here. Um, but let's, uh, l uh, let's, let's move on here. So next thing I want, I want to talk about, and you're doing uh, amazing, by the way. Thank you for doing this, and thank you for taking the time uh, to do this. Was Here's a, a sketchy one. Let, let's shift to transportation. So uh, what's going on with uh, transportation exactly? Are there any improvements with Caltrain? I know there was some commotion. I was reading the thoughts to electrify uh, uh, Caltrain. Um, is there anything planned down the, the pipeline, and what does that mean exactly? Uh, well, yes, uh, the good news is is that Caltrain uh, has gotten all of the funding it needs um, for electrification. Mm. Uh, the EIR has been done, the contracts have been rewarded. When um, we needed one more approval from the Secretary of Transportation mm -hmm. to get the federal dollars that we needed, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and then we, it was all set to go, President Trump takes office, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they sort of put a, a, a hold on all of these federal grants. And so, I was hoping that name wasn't going to come up during the talk, but it has to. It's inevitable. <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, oh, so he, he puts a hold on all these yes, federal grants? Yes, yes. And so all of a sudden we were so close to being able to get the, uh, the funding that we needed that um, we had to sort of do uh, an all-out pitch, uh, mm -hmm. everybody flying to Washington, trying to uh, deal with, with members of Congress and the Secretary of Transportation, all of this to be able to get the agreement signed, and which was which was done. So awesome. that was sort of the very last hurdle. Persistence. And, yeah, persistence and, a, and, and, and a full court press, but everybody sort of working together. So uh, we weren't duplicating our, our efforts or giving different messages. Okay. So anyway, everything's in place, and um, we're starting to work on electrification of uh, Caltrain. It's, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it will take a number of years to be able to do. Just, just simple terms, what, uh, what exactly does electrification uh, mean aside from the, the straight neutral track? Would this be new routes? No, uh, uh, it's the exact same, exact same route that it's on. Okay, um, just extension, uh, continue on. Continuing on, but so instead of um, diesel run engines, ah, got it. That's uh, okay. it's going to be electric. Right. And so the wires will be overhead and they'll be everything will be change to be electric, mm -hmm. but it just scores much better for the environment, but it means that you can run um, more trains, faster trains, and have greater capacity. Right. And as it stands now, Caltrain is just, you know, because it's so hard to commute uh, by car, mm -hmm. people are sort of flocking to the trains, which is great, but they're really very overcrowded. Um, and that yeah. creates any number of delays or whatever. So electrification really is Which brings answer. me to uh, another one that everybody... Um, I was not frustrated about, but it brought up to me the high-speed rail. I know I've been through Gilroy, and they're like, this thing's never going to get done. Uh, the difference between the high-speed rail is, I guess, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Uh, Ken, it's supposed to kind of hit the, the inside coast of the Merced, et cetera, area, and then connect through um, to, to Gilroy. Um, any thoughts or anything's brought up with that? Are you familiar with it? It's okay if you're, if sure. you're not. Okay, you are. Yeah, and, and some of it is as it comes through Santa Clara County. Yes, yes. Exactly where that alignment is going to be. Is it going to be um, through downtown Gilroy or a little farther east? Um, uh, what disruption might it cause when it comes through San Martin? Mm -hmm. uh, again, because it would sort of come downtown right. through there. And That's then, a huge project. Realistically, it's going yeah. to take... A lot of time. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of money. And then sort of what's the alignment when it comes through downtown mm -hmm. uh, San Jose and hits Deridon Station. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that still is being debated. The board um, will be weighing in as far as what we think is the preferred route through here. Right. This is still a long ways away as it sort of comes up through the Central Valley. And it's one of those things that people understand, I mean, nothing happens 
overnight, right? This is something that uh, will hopefully be completed while we're still around. That's right. And uh, and, and we're still uh, uh, alive. So, uh, but that that's all, all wonderful stuff, great stuff. Um, I have so many uh, questions. I'm not even sure where to uh, begin here. Uh, so let's. Uh, oh, I want to get your thoughts on Finland. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. So this is, you know, the debate. Oh, you're smiling. Yeah, he we, is familiar no, with no, it. I, no, I'm not uh, familiar this, with Finland. But uh. no, no. So, so this is uh, they did a case study to uh, reduce uh, homework, increase recess, and in elementary education. I just want to get your personal thoughts on that. And, and I'm just, Brian's nodding that he's familiar, and you have a PhD uh, in in education. I'll, I'll send this to you after. Basically, they went from the bottom of the ranks. Ken all the way to the very top and number one in test scores and that's one of the only things they did uh, was do that. Uh, you have no c control, there's no relevancy in that to you and all. I was talking to Deborah Green Elementary School District yeah. on that. Do you feel that, you know, that our, our schools could be possibly uh, you know, open too long or standardized. There is some legislation put in, in place to shorten school times. Um, you're not on the buzz here. This is just a personal opinion uh, from your ex your experience. Uh, what were you, what are your, your, your personal thoughts? Uh, well, I think first and foremost, we need to do more with um, early childhood education, early childhood learning, mm -hmm. so people will, so these kids will have a better start. I think uh, uh, in particular areas uh, of our of our, our community, uh, kids are behind once they even start kindergarten, first grade, and I think we need to put more of an effort on that. Uh, certainly, by the time they're in third grade, if they're sort of falling behind, we know that the uh, that the odds that they won't graduate become very high. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of things that we need to do. Uh, be interested in sort of seeing what they're finding with maybe the shorter school day or the longer recess or. Uh, what you know, what goes on um, once they're actually in school, but I think we also need to really focus in on what on preschool as well. Wonderful. Uh, one other thing, I listed some of the uh, accomplishment and captions earlier on Instagram and through, but uh, let's start with, with 2015. So you crafted some programs uh, to collect and properly dispose of pharmaceuticals and medical uh, sharps and require pharmaceutical companies to help cover those uh, costs. Yeah, so that's awesome. It but is awesome. How, how does one? Um, uh, go about that to actually executing out the plan, right? Because this has to be in hospitals. So these are the containers we see, uh, and so forth, uh, and and stuff like that. How how does one go across putting that in? How did that come about for you? And you thought so that was something that was interesting that could be implemented. Yeah, no, it, um, it it all of these things are are not easy. You can it's easy to sort of pass something, but there's and then any, to actually execute. Yeah, yeah the idea is execute easy, it. right? Execute and so better. we knew that uh, there were very few places where you could um, actually dispose of these sharps, and you didn't want them in the regular trash can um, that they would then go out uh, to to the landfills. Okay. Uh, Homeless people. Any any number of things, but, but there wasn't really any place for people to dispose them. And yeah. so um, some of it too, what, there was the sharps, but there was also the expired drugs. Mm -hmm. And so where do you sort of uh, uh, put those. You, again, you don't want to flush the toilet, uh, th uh, the, the pills down the toilet, or again have them in the landfill. Um, but um, but it wasn't easy to come up with locations and places to disp deposit them. Mm -hmm. And so we were working with a lot of the pharmacies. Not only did you do that, you got the pharmaceutical company yeah, to cover the, the cost. The cost. We had to do that. We had to find the right location. We had to do this. We had to do that. We had to make sure that it was secure. You didn't want to uh, have a situation where people were putting these. Um, expired drugs and then having somebody kept them and so they had to be very secure. So anyway, we were able to sort of work through that, work out with the industry and with the uh, with the pharmaceutical companies as well as the pharmacies and now in any number of places throughout the county uh, you can dispose of them. And so I love it guys. This gentleman's a beast and then you took, you also took on Big tobacco. Big got tobacco. That extend. That must have been an easy one. Got that was, that not, that was to, not uh, as easy. To, to, to 21, from 18 to 21. Right, right. The reasons are obvious. Um, what was powerful, I think, when uh, for us, what, what was that like? Uh, if you can give some insights. Uh, I'm sure there was some resistance towards that getting it moved to, to, uh, to 21. Or was it or was there not? Was the opposite pretty um, clean and easy? To, to get that moved to 21 and get it incorporated, there was no flack and, and no nothing. No, there was no. Uh, there's always flack. Let's be honest here. No, there's always flack, and 
I, I, this PR I, guys are giving I me have, the eyes in the background here. They're I, like, I have been very, God, Rowan, you're killing me. I have, I've been very, <laughs> very strong in, 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 in my uh, anti-tobacco, anti-smoking work. That's why I'm here right now. You're always transparent and, and you, you stand up for things. Yeah. Uh, and that's self-awareness. That takes uh, cojones, excuse my language. Wait a minute, this is my show. I can say whatever I want. Yeah. But uh, I love that about you. Yeah, and so we have in, in Santa Clara County some of the most stringent anti-smoking, anti-tobacco ordinances anywhere, anywhere in the country anywhere in the country. And one of the many things that we have is a restriction on um, smoking in multi-family um, units. Outdoor restaurants. Everyone, all of that, because, you know, that secondhand smoke, you know, certainly goes through the ventilation in these, uh, in these housing units. And so you can't smoke there. You smoke outside, which is certainly fine. Uh, but made it much harder to um, uh, get a hold of tobacco cigarettes, uh, e-cigarettes, the mm -hmm. flavored um, uh, tobacco products, and so now you you have to go into uh, the stores that basically sell tobacco, like cigars, but you have to be 21 mm. to be able to go into them. Made it time, harder. Time is a beautiful thing. I think back to Mad Men and how we were like in the 60s and 70s, and doctors are examining you just I know. smoking cigarettes. I know, I know. Yeah, right? Mad Men. Mad Men was great. Uh, they were just smoking everywhere. Right, but it, <laughs> but it takes time for us to realize these yeah. things. And things change, right? JFK always said change is the law of life. And yeah, you have to yeah. uh, go about these things. So homelessness has been um, a big issue. I saw that pop up in 2013. Um, uh, there, there was kind of there was some ordinances you put uh, specifically with HIV uh, and AIDS. Um, what uh, kind of spurred that in, in 2013? So you wanted expand into the testing and by increasing public awareness is just obviously investing in marketing, investing in campaigns. I would say education is the key to the change of perception. You felt that that was one of the ways, right? That, that that's very important, getting that out there. Yeah. What, when did that roll out? That kind of rolled out? In well, a, a lot of that's just tied to sexual health. Mm -hmm. And um, certainly everything we can do to stop the sp spread of um, um, HIV, AIDS, uh, I think we as a community have an obligation to do that. Uh, I have led the effort uh, for the county to have a, what they call a getting to zero campaign, mm -hmm. uh, zero infections, uh, zero stigma, and uh, zero deaths mm -hmm. because of uh, HIV. And so we're just trying to uh, explain to people that now there's... Um, there's medicine people can take so that they uh, won't become in infected uh, by HIV. Uh, it's called PrEP. Um, it takes a bit of advertising and, and education to mm -hmm. sort of explain to the community what I that agree. is, as well as to the primary physician, so mm -hmm. they feel comfortable in prescribing it. Yep. Uh, That's why I'm doing this. It feels important to spread awareness, and people actually know that now they now feel that they almost personally know Ken, right? A lot of people may not even know that you exist, let alone the amount of things you've done for us. Yeah, right? so, yeah. Uh, that's a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, so let's talk about these millennials. Uh, oh, that's you now. Instead of voter outreach, apparently 94, I'm 87, 94 is the cutoff line for these so-called uh, <laughs> uh, m millennials, but um, you, you created some, some, some better voter outreach programs to get uh, people involved uh, and with voting. I'm sure your great PR team was behind all, uh, all of that. What was, uh, how, do, how do you get through uh, to these uh, kids? Is there anything specifically you guys did with this voter outreach program? Well, some of the, the very beginning of it was to make sure that, that people get registered. Right. And um, we have so many people who uh, uh, had become citizens mm -hmm. but uh, may not have registered. You have all the folks that turn 18 uh, mm -hmm. who haven't been uh, uh, who haven't registered. And so what we did was we sort of did an RFP uh, that we just sent out so that any nonprofit group could um, apply for the money so that they could then do voter registration and voter outreach in their communities. And so a lot of that was um, organizations that were on community colleges mm -hmm. um, to be able to register folks, but people in the uh, African American community, the Asian American community, uh, Hispanic groups as well, uh, San Jose State. Um, so we were able to sort of have this big effort where we had students mainly who would then go out and register people mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to vote and then try to track them so we could then make sure that they were able to vote. Wow. So we just wanted to, I mean, there's nothing more important in a democracy than voting right. and to really feel like you're connected uh, to the whole process and you have a stake in it. Uh, it certainly all starts by registering and then voting. Right, right. Well, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, this universal screening for, uh, I was reading last night, developmental uh, disabilities uh, in, in, in pediatric settings in, uh, in 2014. If you could elaborate a Very little important. bit uh, on that, uh, for those 
uh, who are watching and listening. So uh, your your phone died. I've been there. It did. It that did. that is that that is okay. Uh, my live. I'm gonna paste it onto a uh, a different stream later, uh, which is great. But the most important thing is that's why I always have this thing rolling in the background, and this is what we'll be throwing up on on YouTube. So do not worry, sir. We're still gonna get the word out uh, regardless. Um, as far as pediatric uh, uh, settings that cut you off with those um, uh, uh, disabilities, uh, for anybody who may not know, um, what was that uh, exactly? Can you elaborate on that? Again? Yeah, very important, I'm, and I'm very proud of it. I've been, you know, a lot of things that I've been able to do on the ten and a half years uh, on the board of supervisors uh, that I'm very proud of. But that certainly is one of them. We. we we can pick up uh, what they call de developmental um, delays mm. uh, in in kids mm. uh, at a very early age, and so if you can sort of if kids aren't responding to certain um, certain aspects of their lives at a certain point in their life, mm -hmm. then you know that perhaps something is is missing, and that oftentimes it can be as simple as bad eyesight. Mm -hmm. Um, or it could be some sort of other de developmental delay that is causing it. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, so social base. It could be any number of things. Right. And so if Autism, you could, yeah, things. absolutely. And so if you could intervene early and try to correct it, that means as they get older, then they won't sort of have that learning disability that's right. really going to harm them later. But it really takes quite a bit of effort to do this sort of developmental screening. Mm -hmm. And um, so you have to uh, create the tool, you have to have the uh, often the nurse in the mm -hmm. clinic to be able to do it, and the doctor's got to follow it, and the parents got to, you know, to whatever. And so yep. it took quite it took quite a long time, but we've actually then instituted, and we've hired all the staff people to be able to do this work right. so we can catch any of these problems very early on um, so that they don't have learning disabilities as they get older. That's wonderful. That's very cool. Blue Ribbon Task Force. Um, the South City Council had uh, you kind of in charge of that. Uh, before we get into the LGBT community, I wanted to touch on that. Are you still uh, part of this Blue Ribbon Task Force? And what exactly is that for anybody who's listening? Um, well, we've had uh, we've created any number of Blue Ribbon Task Force, okay. um, but we certainly had one um, on uh, jail reform okay. here at the county, um, looking at all of that, which was. Um, you know, because of the Michael um, Tyree um, murder in, in, in the jails. Mm. So we were certainly very involved with that. Uh, but we've had any number of those. And uh, I've always been fortunate at the city and the county level uh, to have my, my colleagues appoint me um, to these committees right. and I love, do the extra work. I love asking the questions and playing dumb. Uh, I promise I'm really not that dumb. But most importantly, for somebody who's thinking in their mind, what the, I still don't get it. What is a Blue Ribbon? Uh, task force exactly. Uh, that's exactly why I asked those sure. questions. That that we uh, can. Uh, what exactly is that? So essentially, a council that. What is the function functioning? Well, it's uh, it, what what it really means is that there's been an issue that has come up that needs extra attention mm -hmm. um, by uh, the either the board or or the, or the city council, and that they ethical want issues primarily or no? It could be any issue. It could be any any issue. Yeah. Um, I know that at the city, um, when we were having some ethical issues mm. with some of our council members, right. um, we had to establish a blue ribbon um, a committee. But we did the same thing here um, with the jails, and so that was a little different. But you're able then to appoint community members as well, mm. and um, one or two of the of the of the elected officials sort of to work as a body mm -hmm. and put in extra amount of time to sort of come up with a solution to whatever uh, issue has been created. Right. Man, man of integrity and transparency, and that's another thing you incorporated on Santa Clara County Board of Super Supervisors. So uh, not only did you say, uh, follow the money, check those credit cards, but also have live stream uh, right. well, through, throughout um, Santa Clara County. But when was that? Uh, moved uh, uh, I think it was uh, late 2000 well, I think about 2010 here um, when I became um, uh, board chair mm -hmm. um, I was certainly aware of the fact that um, we didn't we, we we had you you couldn't webcast right 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 and 
And this is not just for transparency, this is for access. Yeah. I mean, this just, is to get people more involved, get people more engaged. Right, right. And, you know, and you can sort of scratch your head and go, well, how come we don't have that? Yeah. And um, so I, I got the board to be able to pass it. We got the money allocated. And it might incorporate to people to, to show up more. Absolutely. For the, for or, if, or if they can't make it, they could not. Or if they want to, you know, review the tapes um, later, they can do that as well. So Realistically, people have lives. They're stuck from their nine to five. For them to still be able to have access to, to these type of things um, is very, very important. Yeah, so yeah. as we wrap up, I want to shift to you're looking at a pioneer, a fighter in the LGBT uh, community. I was there um, uh, at Esper, SV Pride, SV Pride as yeah. well, the honorees there. Um, so let's go back first. I really want to commend you, and I think it's uh, pretty awesome. Where um, I read that, okay, there's some rhetoric go, go going on in '84, San Jose Mercury News, and you took it as a positive point instead of looking at it in a negative way to say, oh, by the way, I'm an openly uh, a gay man, right? And I'm a decision maker, uh, and so forth, and and get, put yourself out there. And I feel that that takes uh, a level of confidence, self awareness, especially for a politician, because people are so constantly worried. Obviously, you know, Ken, I got to filter. I don't care what anyone thinks, right? I'm going to be open. I'm going to be honest uh, in a polite, respectful uh, way. Um, uh, first off, I commend you for that. Number two, that took some courage um, at the time, right? That might be in the background with these guys going, don't do that, Ken. That's a PR nightmare, right? But I think in the end, being honest, being authentic, being transparent, people respect that. People uh, love that. Um, what, what was going through your your mind then? Well, well, first off, we shouldn't give any attention to whatever rhetoric uh, was going on, but obviously this was a response to... If you, if you could just uh, elaborate a little uh, on that. Yeah, it. Um, if someone had had written an article in the in the Mercury News, basically saying that uh, that 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 gay people uh, were so contemptible that they shouldn't have any rights whatsoever. This was this was before uh, laws saying that you couldn't discriminate based on sexual orientation uh, had been passed and that basically the, uh, our society didn't even need or want gay people because again they were so mm. despicable right. and at that point I wasn't um, I wasn't out to everybody and mm. certainly very involved in politics mm. but 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 I realized as I was reading that paper uh, that Sunday morning that if I didn't stand up for myself nobody else would right and it's been, been a, a, a obviously a philosophy I've carried with me uh, uh, all my life. That I guess even, what, even even guess what there was hundreds of others you were speaking for. Yeah, right? and that even though it might hurt me uh, politically, right. uh, professionally, economic, I mean, any number of ways. That the most basic thing is your own being your own you. your, oh, your own rights and 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 you being a fighter mm. for what you know is right and oh. being able to accept the consequences of when you do that. And it really then allowed me to, um, to get more active in the gay community and, right. and uh, create a, a, a gay political organization that is still um, around today. One more time, that was the one I, when I missed. The original name was? It's still called, uh, it's called Baymac Bay Area Municipal Elections Committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, we formed I'm, it in 84. Mr. Eager incorporated uh, a certain policies to include gender uh, when it came to harassment. Uh, was it in the work, workplace? Uh, or ordinances, but to make sure that uh, gender is included or considered. Um, it had to do with harassment. I can't remember if it's workplace. It's obviously probably in workplace. Uh, Ken has done so much and so many things. He's trying to track it. Did I do that? Uh, but yes, you did. So <laughs> you, you helped uh, uh, with that as well. Um, so fast forward, you the first rainbow flag, and, and I, I love diversity, I think that's awesome, is flown at uh, San Jose City Hall. Oh, yeah, And I saw it when walking in today. That's right, Threw that on there. Snapchat. It's there. And threw a pointer and said, by the way, the gentleman I'm about to meet is one of the reasons that uh, that that is is there, meaning right outside of West uh, Heading Street. So San Jose City Council, when did we have that first flag? So I was uh, um, I, I took office uh, January one two thousand and one, mm -hmm. and that June, which is Gay Pride Month, mm -hmm. was the very first time that we raised the rainbow flag. Uh, at City Hall, and that actual flag is uh, outside my office, mm -hmm. right here, um, framed. Um, that's awesome. That's what I saw. That, that's what you saw. Yes. Yeah, so that felt that was important. And I think it goes back to why it's important to elect people from all aspects of our community. Right. Um, because 
perspective. Uh, yeah, per- perspective and, 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 and understanding that if that often what we do will be the first time the government has actually ever done it. Yes. And so you would think, uh, oh, well, it's no big deal to raise the rainbow flag in front of City Hall. Mm. Clearly, it must have been happening like forever. Mm. But then you realize, nope, nope nobody absolutely. ever thought of it. Yep. Nobody, yep. Ever, nobody ever did it. And so I show up here at the county uh, in uh, 2007, January 1, 2007, and lo and behold, the rainbow flag has never been flown here either. Mm. And so we raise it uh, in June and very proud that the rainbow flag flies uh, every workday. And right oh, below, is it, right, is it 365? Every, yeah, 365. Every, every word there. Yeah, awesome. and right below it is uh, the um, transgender um, flag as well. So. And that first time was in 2007 um, for that. Yeah. That's wonderful. So uh, I want to talk about, uh, and just to, to, to wrap up, I, I want to grab this as well, but uh, you published... Um, what was it? Was it a book exactly? Yeah. So this is Trailblazers. Yes, right. Um, and can can people find that anywhere? Where, where can we find that? It's uh, out of print. Uh, okay. but you can always. That's a good sign. Yeah, it is. I, I <laughs> guess uh, you could you could try Amazon to see if people okay. are selling it used. Perhaps Ryan, is, is one way to do it. Get on that. We gotta make sure that's accessible. Uh, but uh, no, it sounds like a silly question, but what, what what gave you that? Was it always in your mind that you know what? A book. What was the the inspiration kind of uh, behind the book? Uh, did it take a while? Was it a quick process, or was this something you always journaled? Or well, what can I, people expect? I, you know, at, at this point, I had um, I had been elected to the community college board, and um, but I was always interested in uh, open gay uh, elected officials. Uh, how did they how did they maneuver? Uh, the political waters and we're slowly seeing athletes now and that All controversy of that is, it's not uh, easy check out my talk with james gonzalez uh, imagine being a police officer, officer same thing. imagine being on patrol and uh, the type of alpha male stuff that goes on there and that was a pretty brilliant conversation with him yeah, because right, right. Uh, obviously he's, he's just as equipped he's he's just as good but uh, to say that there's not going to be some some back talk or people are going to say, sure. I don't want to be on patrol with him, that he didn't have to go through some adversity. Uh, we'd be lying. So much respect to uh, to James uh, as well, one of the first openly uh, gay police officers there. But, uh, but back to the, the, the book. Uh, yeah, so I was just curious um, of how these folks had done it um, and what kind of issues they worked on once they got elected and what their lives were like. So I traveled the country and... Uh, Interviewed people uh, throughout the country. Uh, spent two or three days with them okay. at their in their homes okay. to sort of learn about them, and then wrote it up. And so there's a chapter uh, on on each person in, in, in the book. It. It. And uh, looking Talk back about on documenting, it, yeah, and you're looking, essentially like your own. Buddha, where you went and traveled countries right. to actually talk. And, and at that point, and again, we're going back to um, the mid '90s. There were only at that point there had only been a hundred. Uh, openly gay people elected to any office in, in the entire United States. Mm-hmm. And so I thought it was a um, pretty unique sort of group of people mm-hmm. and just wanted to know how they did it. Yeah, that's so, what better way. Yeah. Uh, find out who the best yeah. is, surround yeah. yourself by and learn with them. Germany had some stuff going on. I don't know why it popped into my head. Was Germany just passing legislation? To, to, well, to allow um, gay marriage. Okay, so they're just at that just point. Just now. Just now. Interesting. Just now. Germany. And we, we got there in California... Um, I felt like it was 2011, I'm guessing 2012, but that's, that's crazy that uh, 2001, 2002, such a, cap that actually took that long. Am I, correct me on that. Well, yes, it? well, the, the California Supreme Court um, allowed gay marriages, but that, they only for, for six months uh, until Prop 8 passed, which stopped it. Got it. And then the whole issue went then to the U.S. Supreme Court, and then uh, then they allowed it everywhere. And while we're on that, how many how many marriages are you at? Uh, you've been over a hundred. Tell us about that. Over a hundred. So yeah, when uh, when well, there there were the two periods of time, as as I said, but the, when the U.S. Supreme Court um, um, allowed it, which then made it legal in California again. Uh, this building, which is where you can get your where you can get your marriage license and also get married, mm. uh, just we just had couples everywhere, mm. and uh, so on that uh, on the, the on the next day after, mm. uh, I married uh, twenty six couples, awesome. uh, same sex couples uh, here in the office because as a county supervisor I have the authority uh, to be a marriage commissioner, awesome. and so I was able to do that. And keep going with that. Keep Any, going with that. Anybody getting married coming up? 
you know, who to call. There you go. Right? He's got some. You can, uh, you can get married in my office if you want. So that's with, wonderful. With, with Speaking of, uh, there was an LGBT um, office center, some type yeah, created. Yeah, Office of uh, LGBT Affairs. Okay. Where um, the only. And, and for anybody who might be listening, where, where could they find that? Well, again, if you you can always go to the uh, county webpage, okay. or you can go onto my webpage, and it's all, all pretty easy to find. But um, we are the only county in the United States that has such an office. Um, there are a couple cities that have it, but it really just sort of shows that we we need to pay attention to all of our uh, diverse groups here. Right. And, um, and so they, they need to know they have resources and yeah. places that they can go and. Um, yeah, that they're not they're not alone, right? right. Like they have that uh, that common gun. Right. So, so just to, to wrap up, what's what's but, the, well, oh, before go, we wrap please, up, please, please, but maybe we, maybe we can talk about the uh, about the uh, the painting that is right behind us. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. Isn't that cool? Babyland furniture. Well, West, so oh, West Car- This West is West San Carlos, Carlos and Bascom, a uh, very famous cor- uh, corner, maybe because the pink poodle is there. But this is about, <laughs> but this is about two so about two blocks from my house. Yeah, so yeah. I've represented this area on yes. the city council, District Four, District Four, and um, I, I had met this uh, painter because he had done some paintings that are over on the other wall, and so I asked him if he could um, capture this because time wow. changes, and so I've been very involved in trying to keep uh, any number of the signs that we have, and one of the big things we did was to save the... Very cool um, from a marketing the, perspective. It's yeah. a vintage uh, San Jose. Right, right. right. But, you know, the, the carousel that they have at Cambrian Park Plaza, uh, we were able um, to, to save that. Right. Um, and um, gotta, and zoom, trying to do some get others. A zoom in on uh, get Google. on that. Get on I laughed out loud because think of my immigrant father... It was this, this inside joke, but I, I heard him yelling one time. says, don't think I don't know where the pink poodle is, okay? <laughs> but uh, aside from that, inappropriate Roman, uh, the most important thing is the, the history of San Jose and, and, and West. Yeah, and yeah, and this is in, in, in particular. And But nothing stays forever. And so, I mean, like even now, Time Deli is closed. Right. Baby Land, of course, Or school or just supply hardware. Has, has, has been bought out. And... Um, uh, Mel, Mel Cotton's is, is, is gone as well. So anyway, we're really trying to do no whatever way. we can. Is this McDonald's? O- OC McDonald's, yeah. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? So anyway, it's, uh, I enjoy having it here. And That's again, because all the time we're... we're uh, and, and we can pretty much see uh, all of San Jose here. I'll show you guys in a second. Look, there's literally a fire going on somewhere, and we can see it poofing there is, out. There is, a, uh, from us, there is uh, something going on over there. Here, so... Um, Mr. Year, obviously it's a pleasure and honor to have you. What, what is what is next uh, for you, um, sir? I know there's some 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 competition out there. God bless them. You got some serious shoes uh, uh, you're up against. If you really know this matter, that's the goal of this. Um, you really accomplish uh, a lot, sir. And um, I said it to Magdalena. I don't kiss but I only give credit where credit is due and I just wanted to say uh, thank you as well for everything you've done uh, way back when from 96 on to here because we don't real- realize it enough but even if you've made a significant change in a one's life how many people can say they actually done that in their life right and felt oh, right. thank so you for saying that uh, thank you um, very cool um, why not travel the world and read more books you, you, you're not done yet you want to keep going, and if you don't feel comfortable, tell us you, you don't have to. But uh, is the plan to uh, take higher uh, heights up there, or you want to stay local? You'd like to stay in your community where you're at. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yet? Well, I, you know, I certainly have enjoyed working at the local level. You can do things. You can really uh, have a more immediate impact mm-hmm. than you can at the at, in Sacramento at, sure. or in, and in Washington. Uh, but certainly. Um, and I've a year and a half left here at the county and plan to, okay. to do a lot of things. So I'll sort of see what uh, my options are. Certainly um, State Senate uh, in 2020 is, is something I'm seriously looking at. Nice. But uh, we'll also see uh, what other options are out there. Don't worry, Mr. Gilmore. I become the President of the United States. I'm going to make you the head of something. Okay, we're going to work All right. on that. But, All right, I'm, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> no, uh, and, and then the, uh, so you're a triathlete in your free time. Is a beast. I'm a former college athlete. I played basketball at San Francisco State as well. Um, anything that uh, you're doing, any personal goals? That's the hardest part. Is we got to set those little personals. I'm in a complete X, or we don't get anything done, right? For any triathletes listening out there, uh, is it just business, business this year, or anything that you're actively doing as far as uh, athletics? 
Well, uh, I I started off um, being a marathon runner, and, but I think my marathon days are over, and so then I transitioned into triathlons. Don't make me look up some 65-year-old beast and send you a picture and say, now what? Um, <laughs> and but swim is awesome. You swim that as well. Yeah, I did a lot of the, a lot of the open water swims um, and a lot of swims around uh, the pier for all the triathlons in Santa Cruz. Isn't that incredible? incredible? Not just Santa Cruz, but... People going to Alcatraz and back. Yes, I have. I, 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 I have no. I have no desire okay. to, to, <laughs> to swim <laughs> off of uh, Alcatraz. Well, people once said it was insane, and now people just do it. It kind of goes back to the four-minute mile, right? It couldn't be done. One person breaks it. Uh, hundreds break it the day after, yeah. right? And it's just mental. Well, it's yeah, mental it's, a, it's a mental of actually breaking those limits, but. Uh, with that said, we're, we'll be hanging out with, with Ken again. I just want to say it was a pleasure and honor. Thank you for being so open, allowing me into your uh, home. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Roman Hall. This is Ken Yeager, uh, Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors, District 4. Um, and it was a, a pleasure. We'll see you again. It was a pleasure. Uh, Thanks, soon. Roman. I appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Ken. Very cool. Very cool. I have some uh, work to